Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm finally going to have a look at the resin figures for Modifius' game Wasteland Warfare. You may recall, quite a while ago, that I had a look at this box set which came with the PVC figures, which in my opinion were kind of poorly moulded and very gappy, which wouldn't have been too bad, but I did pay quite a lot of money for this box set. If you want to see that video there will be a link in the description. Modivius were very generous and sent me a set of the resin figures which they absolutely didn't have to do, so I certainly appreciate that. Unfortunately it has taken me a long while to get around to looking at these, but I guess better late than never. In this video I'll be looking at the human survivors, and of course dog meat, and I'll look at the super mutants and hounds and such in a later video. Also, before I get the you didn't paint them comments, no, I haven't painted them. Time is finite and precious. They'll get painted eventually. These resin models came in a bunch of Ziploc bags still on the sprues. I don't know if that's how they normally arrive, but I do believe they require assembly when you buy them normally as well. That's how I would prefer the models to arrive anyway, rather than pre-built. Before we begin I should probably note that I'm not a huge fan of working with resin, so that will definitely colour my opinions in this video. Anyway, that's probably enough waffling, let's get to putting these figures together. First we have the female survivor, I believe her name to be Nora, but I'm a rebel and I might give her a new name like, uh, Laura? The model consists of three parts and a base. Most of the figures are like this. You can see right away, or I did anyway, I'll show a side by side comparison later, you can see that this is much better looking than the PVC figures. The detail is much sharper and well defined. This is not unexpected though. You can see that there is some flashing, but it's not too bad really. I used this brush intended for airbrush cleaning to knock the flashing off. It does a pretty reasonable job of this. There are also some mould lines, obviously that's not ideal, but they're not horrible and can be removed with a little bit of scraping and sanding. At least in places you can get to with your sanding device of choice. I had to do this with all of the models to varying degrees. This particular figure did take a fair while to get cleaned up to where I was satisfied with it. The assembly is just a matter of gluing the arms and gun part on. It fits okay without too much work to minimise gaps at the joins. Because this is resin we need to use super glue to bond the parts together. This is one of the reasons I don't like resin. You don't get as much time to fiddle with the positioning of parts, but I suppose that's not specific to these models, just resin and metal in general. I got the arms into place fairly neatly. It looks much better than the fit on the PVC model which you'll see later. I think if these were put together by somebody in a factory they would probably have less time and effort spent on them, thus more gaps and building the model myself is something I rather enjoy. This figure has a gun strapped to her back. This is pretty easy to install, and it seems like you could put it on with the barrel facing upwards or downwards. I ummed and ahed over which way would look better, but I went with the barrel down. I think this figure has turned out pretty well. Still not perfect, and I think I'm going to have to use a little bit of putty on her, but it's not too bad at all. You can see her here on her base, which also looks quite good. I'm not gluing her down yet because it will be much easier to paint the figures and bases individually. I plan to paint all the bases in one go and then slowly paint the figures. Up next, Dog Meat, who is a good boy. All doggos are good boys. Not much to this model, it's just a single piece doggo and a base. There's still a mould line that needs to be cleaned up, but I wouldn't say that was a big issue. No gaps to complain about here with this being a single piece. It goes onto the base quite easily. I like this much better than the original PVC dog meat I got. This dog meat looks quite good to me. Wood pet. Okay, let's look at something that was a little bit more challenging. This guy with the leather straps. He did have a bit of flashing, which is not too hard to clean up at all. That said, this was the most annoying model in this set to build. I started by gluing on the right arm holding the gun. This was pretty fiddly to get into place properly. Then comes the challenge of gluing the left arm on, which connects to both the hand holding the gun and the shoulder. This wouldn't be much of a challenge in plastic. You would get plenty of time to adjust things in plastic, but it doesn't work so well in resin. 
It was very annoying to try and get all of the parts on and minimise the gaps at each connection point. It didn't help that the first thing I did with this body was to drop it and accidentally break his right leg. That's not an issue with the model, just my own incompetence. I did eventually get him together, and I would say the fit is okay. Definitely going to need some filling though. The gun looks to be a bit bent too, which I'm going to have to take care of. My notes on this figure include a lot of swearing. You can see here where I'm trying to attach him to the base that the leg repairs haven't quite bonded properly and the parts flex. Oh well. Moving along, I build the power armour suit next. The parts of this figure look very good. There was still some flashing and mould lines, but they were quite minor. A model like this with harder edges than a human has makes it easier to hide things like mould lines and such. I think this might be my favourite of the models you'll see in this video. It goes together really easily. It's just a matter of gluing the arms on, the only real challenge here is holding them until the glue decides it wants to set, and then gluing the head on. There is a little bit of play here so that you've got a tiny amount of freedom with how you install the head. I figured having him look towards where he's pointing his gun would be a sensible idea. The legs don't seem to want to fit into the holes in the base properly. The spacing just isn't right. The pin on the forward foot is just a mere nub, and I must have clipped the pin off the rear leg at some point. Not really a big deal. I may just have to pin this when I eventually glue the model to the base. Next up, this long-haired sniper. The cleanup for this figure was pretty much the same as all of the others. One issue I found though is that the hole that is meant to be in the right shoulder joint is miscast and full of resin. The options were to drill it out or cut off the mounting pin on the arm. I chose to cut off the pin. I quite like the base this figure gets with the lantern knocked over on a wooden floor. Looks like a recipe for disaster, but it also looks quite good and is fairly different to the rest of the bases. The assembly of the figure wasn't too bad and I do appreciate that the gun and arms are a single piece. Still, it was a bit fiddly and I ended up with much more of a gap than I wanted. Again, it would have worked much better if this was hard plastic because the plastic melts and sticks together and there would have been much more time to nudge the parts around and get a better fit. With resin, you have to pretty much get the part in exactly the right spot before the superglue bonds and that won't happen until the glue is good and ready. If you let go of it, it will either be bonded or fall off. I could of course use something to speed the bonding process up, but I didn't have any on hand, and I get the feeling that I would just accidentally move the part out of place when trying to use it anyway. Oh well, the result is decent enough and the figure does look pretty good. It's just a little bit gappy. The final sprue here is okay. There's a bit of flashing and some minor mould lines like pretty much all of the other models. As you can see, both of the arms on this one are independent. That should make things very easy. And it does. Though I did still end up with some gaps. Certainly not the worst gaps of all time, and nothing that a tiny bit of putty can't deal with. I think this looks pretty good anyway. The model does look like its feet are hovering a couple of centimetres off the ground. That's just because I haven't pushed it all the way into the base. Again, they're not glued down at all. Okay, let's have a look at these resin models next to their PVC counterparts. The resin models are the lighter coloured ones on the left, just in case you couldn't tell from the difference in detail alone. First up, Nora, or Laura, or Betsy, or whatever I've decided to call her. The difference between these figures is very obvious at first glance. The detailing on the resin model is so much more crisp. Really quite nice. I'm sure it's obvious to most of you that the resin models are going to be more detailed, but it's nice to see them side by side. You can see just how big a difference there is. The joins are so much better on the resin model. The gaps were one of my main issues with the PVC figures. I'm actually kind of excited to start painting these up now, but I've got other things in the painting queue first. Dog meat is next. You can see that the PVC one is still very much leaning over. It would be easy enough to glue him upright, I just haven't been bothered to do so yet. This is really more down to the model coming loose during transit I think than the actual model. Fortunately, Resin Doggo doesn't have this problem at all. Obviously this is because it doesn't come mounted on the base. I really like this model. Dogs are great. I also like the base with the knocked over Nuka Cola bottle. That's a fun little detail. There's not really a whole lot to say about dog meat. I do hope I can do him justice when I paint him. Then there's this guy. I don't know what his name is, probably Dave or something. 
In this case, the gaps are far better on the PVC model. It actually looks like the PVC one is a single part. I assume it would have been significantly more difficult to mould this as a single part in resin than PVC. Otherwise, they probably would have just made the resin one a single part as well. Besides the gaps where the parts go together, the resin model is hands down superior in every other way. Not that that's unexpected. This was the most annoying model to assemble in this lot. I don't yet know if any of the mutant models are worse, but I certainly hope not. I guess what matters is I got him together and he does look relatively good. And here are the power armor guys. In my opinion, this was one of the better models from the PVC set. It's still not as nice and crisp as the resin version, but it's a lot better than any of the human figures. I think that might be down to how many hard non-organic edges and surfaces there are on this model. They're obviously both quite different, but the PVC one is still pretty decent. The resin one has obviously been stuck to the base with blue tack because it wouldn't stand there by itself. Also, as I think I mentioned earlier, it wasn't ever going to mount onto the base properly anyway. That's not a huge issue, I can just fill in one of the mounting holes, and almost certainly pin the model in place when I put it on the base. I think this is a really cool model. I do like the power armor suits. They're so iconic to the Fallout universe. Very good. I'll probably paint both of these. Next, we have Longhaired Sniper Person. I'm not entirely sure if it's male or female or what, but I don't suppose that really matters. Again, obviously the resin model looks much better. The gaps on the resin one are worse than I wanted. Clearly, I don't think anybody really wants gaps that shouldn't be there, but you know what I mean. There are gaps there, and they are nowhere near as bad as on the PVC model, but they still annoy me. The hair is really nicely defined on the resin figure, and I think it's going to be really nice to paint up. Finally, we have this guy. Again, on this model I didn't get the arms on perfectly and gap free. It's clearly not as gappy as the PVC figure, but those gaps are still there. I would prefer not to have to do any putty work, but obviously I'm going to have to. That said, I certainly preferred having the opportunity to put these models together myself than just have to be satisfied with, or fix the efforts of, whoever assembled the PVC figures. Okay, so that's all of the Survivor figures. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'll be doing the Super Mutants, Hounds and Deathclaw next time. That's not going to be the next video, it'll be a couple of weeks, but you'll see it eventually. I'm not at all surprised that the resin models are as good as they are. Still not perfect of course, but what is? They are far closer to the digital renderings that were shown when I bought the PVC set. That was one of the things I objected to. I didn't feel like it was very clear what I was ordering. Of course, there are fanboys who will get all bent out of shape when somebody has any kind of criticism, and some of them were pretty rude last time, from just plain abusive to assuming I had no idea I was getting the PVC figures, missing the point completely. Obviously, I could have done more research into the box set, and that would have led me to talking myself out of the purchase. I'm a bit of an impulse buyer, and what I saw showed some very nice 3D renderings of the models, and that, combined with Modifius's reputation for very nice models, convinced me. Clearly, that's not what I got. I feel like at the price point of this game, it should have been much more clear what I was getting. I mean, fair, you do get the game and related books and tokens, etc. But still, I think those models were fairly bad for the price. All of that said, I am very thankful to Modifius for sending me these resin models. They absolutely didn't have to do that. I don't think my video was going to impact their sales much, if at all, and I'm not under the impression that I have a lot of clout or anything like that. I'm impressed by their dedication and belief in their products, such that they would send me a bunch of models to prove it. It has taken me a long time to actually get around to building them, which is unfortunate, but it's better late than never, right? The resin figures are definitely much better than the PVC ones, like they said. Still not exactly like the digital renderings, but they are very close. Close enough for me anyway. I like that I got to put the models together too. I do rather enjoy assembling models, in case you didn't know that, even if they are resin. Not my favourite material ever, but it seems to work pretty well for these models. Better than other examples of resin I've seen anyway. I will do the final work, which is mostly puttying on these models before painting them. There's a little bit to do, but not too much, so I'm not going to make a video about it. 
The plan is to paint all of the bases in one video, then I'll be painting the figures in individual videos or as small groups. So if that's of interest to you, stick around. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, unless you're just going to whine or be abusive. Best to keep that to yourself. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe, follow, ring the bell, and all of the other things you do on YouTube and social media. Links to all of the things including Patreon and my Twitch channel are in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other and thanks for watching. Farewell.